Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Out doing a Monday morning ruck with the crew. We're doing a little different this time. We brought the children along. Yeah, I know, that probably just triggered some people. What, you're bringing children out there in the woods with guns and training? Yep. Uh, in fact, I think the youngest one is three. Now he's he's being pulled in a wagon, but it, it's good for the children to get out. It's good for us guys to spend time with our children this way. And they don't realize it, the children. But this is training. They're they're training, and then we're walking a full six and a half miles. It's it's kind of rough terrain at some places, uh, and we're making them do it. Some of them have some bug out bags. Some of them not. Doesn't matter. It's the experience. So we're doing that. Do you folks remember where you were 22 years ago today? It is that time of the year again. I remember very, very distinctly where I was. I was just getting off night shift patrol at the sheriff's department and was actually walking out the door. I'd done my reports and everything. I was just getting ready to walk out the door and Someone in the office, as I was walking past, hollered at me, said, hey, get back in here. And there was already a bunch of guys gathered around the TV, and the first one had hit to the tower. And we stayed for several hours. Now, my opinion is, and number one, remember those, I think just, just the last couple of days, they identified several more bodies because of DNA. Remember those families. But I'm telling you folks, that was probably one of the very first shots fired uh, in this New World Order global takeover. Now, it's not the very first thing that happened. That had been going on for decades. I mean, you could go back to the Federal Reserve Act uh, and even before then. But I think 9-11 was probably the first big thing to kind of catapult us into the world that we live in today. That's just my opinion. You don't have to agree with it. But, yeah, remember that today. That what has happened, what our, our government did uh, to get us to the point. Like they, they actually did these things to get us as a people and as a nation to the point that we are today. And whenever you stop and, and think, well... Maybe, maybe it's not quite as bad as all you conspiracy theorists say. Well, remember what they were willing to do and did on 9-11. And if that's not enough, remember what they did at Ruby Ridge and at Waco and many other places. That's the kind of people we're dealing with. Huh. Segwaying. Here's another. I'm getting ready to go down a hill. I don't know how well you can see them. They're further up there. I do that so... You know, they don't get their faces on here, especially the children. But there are four, five, six, seven children with us. And including myself, six men. So there we go. All right. Gas prices going up 50 cents to a dollar a gallon this week in several places. And it's going to get worse. Um, I've seen estimates of averages i know some of you are already paying this but averages of five and six dollars a gallon by the end of this year i've seen some out there i think these are quite a bit out there but like 10 plus dollars a gallon all right that may be a little on the high side that's getting worse because saudi arabia and russia are continually cutting back and then after january 1st saudi arabia and russia and over half of the world's oil supply will be all under BRICS, which is pushing to have their own currency and stop using the U.S. dollar for trade, especially when it comes to oil. Uh, Biden just recently canceled all the gas and oil leases uh, that were outstanding in Alaska. And the Strategic Petroleum Reserve is at its lowest level since 1983. And there are calls on Biden to release even more. Now, one of the things, you have to remember this, one of the things that throughout all of this for the last year or two that the Biden administration has been saying, oh, but, you know, inflation isn't terrible. And, and over the last 
several months. Oh, inflation's been coming down, which actually last month it went up a little bit and it's expected to go back up again to uh, this month. But the reason why, other than the fact that they fudge the numbers, I mean, inflation realistically is probably at least 12%, probably closer to 15 or higher. That's realistic numbers. But the reason why their numbers are as low as they say, in part, is because of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. They're dumping oil onto the market that was paid for years and years ago when oil was drastically cheaper. You know, when they were paying 20 and $30 a barrel for it, and now it's 80 and almost $90 a barrel. Even lower than $20 a barrel, some of that oil. And so they're dumping this oil onto the market, which is artificially keeping the oil prices down. They cannot keep doing that. There, there's not enough oil there to do that. It's getting so low. And they're not replenishing it. So at some point, that's going to catch up with us. And with the restrictions on oil and the restrictions on drilling for new oil, and then we start to run out of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, we're gonna see gas prices skyrocket. And it's gonna be rough. And as you all know, when gas prices go up, it makes everything go up. It's not just the, what you're paying at the pump, it's everything you buy is affected by petroleum prices. And it's going to exacerbate an already really bad situation. It's all kind of coming apart at the seams. And while it may be happening at a slower pace than what is expected or what you expect, it is absolutely happening. And it's building to a point where about the only way that these elites will probably figure that they can get us out of it is a big world war. World wars are great for the economy. Well, they're great for the military industrial complex and for the international banking cartel. That's who it's really good for. And the Fed's been trying to make this work and it's not really working. So what's the next, what's the next thing they can do? Well, the next thing they can do is go to war. And we've been seeing that build for months now. And not just with Russia and Ukraine, and not just with China and Taiwan, but all over the place. Africa, lots of stuff, tensions building there, battle lines being drawn. Uh, like Azerbaijan, I can't ever pronounce that country. That area, battle lines being drawn. Middle East, battle lines being drawn. North Korea, battle lines being drawn. What are the odds that any one of them will pop off in the next six months? I'd say pretty good. That's why we have to be getting ready. Because the worse the economy is, the worse things are, the, the less control that it appears that the elites have over the economy and over all this stuff, then the more likely it's going to be that we will see a war. And I don't know how anyone can look at the actions of the United States government over the last 18 months and not see that they are doing everything they can to poke and prod others into a conflict. So you better get ready for that. I mean, there's certainly lots of things to get ready for. But I believe, and it's not just me, I've heard this from so many people, experts, veterans, all kinds of stuff, that this war is gonna be unlike anything anyone's ever seen. And you better, you better get buckled in and be ready for it. A lot of things you could be doing. You know what they are, stocking up, prepping up, getting out doing what we're doing, getting out and rucking, building family, building kinship, building a tribe, building trust, getting yourself physically in shape. 
honing your skills, and building community. Folks, it's time to get your houses in order. You need to be preparing yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.